Good morning and welcome to Northeast Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, as we gather from across the miles to worship on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. God has promised to meet us here in this time of communion around the prayers of the church, our songs of praise, our wrestling with the scripture, and our eating and drinking with Jesus at a holy table. You are invited, you are wanted, you are welcome in this place And in this gathering, let us center our hearts and minds together for worship. Please join me responsively in our call to worship. Though there is strife in the world, yet will we seek God. When our hearts grow heavy and the burdens are overbearing, we will turn to the Lord. God is with us in all things. We can place our trust in the God of love and hope. Here we receive the 
the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion Lives that are holy and hearts that are true Not just in building small and confining Not in some heaven light years away Here in this place the new light is shining forever gather us in and make us your own gather us in all peoples together fire of love in our flesh and our bones let us pray together most holy God, we await the touch of your spirit with eagerness. We ask that you receive us with our hungers, along with the praise and joy we bring, and by your hands multiply the gifts we hold, that all who hunger may be fed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. John's Gospel, which does not have a description of that last Passover meal that Jesus ate with his disciples, gives us a somewhat similar scene today. Jesus takes the bread, gives thanks, divides it among them, and everybody eats. Take, bless, break, eat. So familiar that when viewed in this outdoor scene, we get a taste of summer and maybe a new perspective on another facet of what the Eucharist we celebrate each Sunday here may mean to us. Jesus had been in Jerusalem at the festival, and while he was there, he got into some hot water with the religious authorities for healing someone on the Sabbath. Now, this was a great occasion, as every confrontation in John's gospel, for Jesus to teach the teachers. So they were outraged. They were outraged enough they were ready to start a new mission to take him out. So he gets away with his disciples to a mountain, and a great crowd seems to have followed him and are making their way to him. So here we go again with another crowd scene. Who knows, they might be coming to take him back to the authorities. You can't tell at a distance what's happening. But Jesus sees them coming and immediately asks, how are we going to feed all those people? (laughs) Why would that even cross his mind? John sees the question as a test of the disciples' perception and their faith. And of course, they fail the test. But notice what comes out of it. For here we have an encounter with those who know him best, dealing with questions all of a sudden, questions of scarcity versus abundance, insecurity versus provision, survival versus nourishment, 
anxiety versus faith, and supply and demand, and lavishness and stewardship. An encounter that the church of John's day was needing some serious conversations about and that the church of our day even seems more desperately to need. What was the answer to how we're going to feed them? There was an immediate counting of heads and then a counting of pennies and dollars and an assessment of what a challenge is in this world where there are so few of us and such limited financial resources. And here we have this massive crowd around us, this world of all kinds of people that we don't even know who need something that only God can provide. It's a challenge of trying to just get along when you feel like you're limited and assume, therefore, that somehow God is limited because the disciples are focused on scarcity. And that doesn't fit well with the reign of God, God's economy in which all those who have need will have plenty, and those who have plenty will be used as vessels to provide it to all who are in need. It's divine. The kingdom of God is at stake here, and yet the theology of scarcity still stands up boldly against God's economy every chance we let it. So maybe we're being challenged not to let it. We watch this scenario play out between Jesus and his closest friends, and even when it's noticed that some boy has five loaves and two fish, there's that sense of, that ain't nothing. What can we do with so little? But look at the response of the master. It's, oh, let him sit down. Jesus, then, is the host at a feast where small, simple gifts, not unlike our bread and wine and dollars and cents, are taken into his hands and blessed. And when spread around are not just enough, there's not just an abundance, there's this superabundance. There was even an abundance of grass for them to sit on, John tells us. This is a lavish feast. Jesus won't be outdone by any of us when it comes to hosting a party, no matter how small those casserole dishes that are coming in seem to be. We don't even know if the people coming after him were actually hungry, but Jesus seems to know. And in his hands, John says, They all ate all that they could eat. They weren't just given survival rations, but more than enough. They were filled, and as if that were not enough, the leftovers of the bread were more than they started with. And thank heaven they didn't keep any morsels of the fish. He not only fed them enough to keep them going, but there was more for another occasion, or maybe to send back with that boy Because once his mama got a hold of him, after dawdling from being at the market, uh, dinner was maybe going to be pretty rough. There's a massive abundance of people, but a super abundance of grass to sit on and food to eat, of leftovers to be gathered, and I'm guessing of newly awakened faith. Wouldn't your life be changed if you received something so astounding from so little, straight out of the hands of the one whose first thought was about taking care of you even when he saw you at a distance? Feeding you, providing for your care, and even comfort, not even knowing who you are. We live in a culture that shakes its head at the world's greatest needs when it looks out at the crowds that are all around us. I keep hearing over and over, there's not much hope in this present economy. Well, what about in God's economy? Along comes Jesus, this amazing, faithful, trusting host of this meal and of every meal, and he says, give him a good seat. Pull out the fine china. 
Prepare for them to feast and be satisfied, for that is the longing of God for all God's children. That is what the reign of God is all about. And it's not reserved in some stuffy pantry in the back kitchen of heaven waiting to be pulled out when we all show up there for our eternal rewards. It's here. It's now. It's for the hungry and for those who don't even know they're hungry. It's for the family and for the foreigner. It's lavishly provided for us not only to enjoy but to share and not worry that somehow we're going to lose something when we give it away. Jesus, who sees the crowds, puts hosting them above any thought of saving up for a rainy day. Nothing in God's economy is too little, and nothing is ever lost. And it's second nature to him. For the people of Jesus, as well as for him, it's second nature for the church to be the same kind of people. In worship, yes. And on the picnic blanket and at the potluck supper and the soup kitchen and food pantry. We are people of the table and people of the many needed tables of our world. So, we come here, and we take, and we bless, and we break, and we give, so that all may taste and see how good is God our provider. Amen. Still my soul, your bed.
In confidence and faith, let us join in prayer together. Loving God, even when our hungers for life let us wander into deep wilderness places, you spread a banquet of grace, pulling us closer, eager to share from your table and from your great joy for us. We whisper our worries in the night, and you say, there is enough, enough for you and for the world to have grace and provision, life and abundance. Your compassion is spread over all of our brokenness, and we feel the healing hands of your love around us in the person of Jesus Christ. God, as we grow nearer to him, we hear again the voice of him who gladly fed the hungry and set up a table piled high with grace and hope peace and joy and wonder, saying, come to me and be satisfied, and then providing more than enough for them and for the world. We want to be your faithful church, Lord. We want to be Christ's body in this world. Help us to recognize the gifts we have been given and the places of need where your blessings should be shared to bless others. Lead us as a missional church, inspired by the grace of Jesus, to do your will in serving others. We lift to you all those we love and care for and those we have not met and need to care for. We pray for the hungry and homeless, the sick, the imprisoned, the lonely, grieving, and lost. O oh God, help us to see Christ anew in those we meet and to welcome them with the love that only you can inspire. Encourage us to be daring and bold, to offer ourselves Jesus, just as Jesus offered himself to us long ago and still does today. Hear the prayers of your people, O oh God, for we stand before you with open hands and open hearts praying that your will might be done on earth through our lives. In the spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Having received the grace of God in the redemption of Christ, we are strengthened in the faith with hearts overflowing with thankfulness. From the depths of our being, we offer to God the very best we have. May our offerings be true acts of worship and thanksgiving.
I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Let us pray. Before you, O oh God, we offer our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. We lay our gifts before you in praise and thanksgiving for your many blessings. May these offerings continue the transforming work of your Spirit through our congregation and through the church throughout this world. Amen. Come, my friends, and receive the answers to your prayers. This cup and this loaf contain the fulfillment of all the longings of the human heart. Through this sacrament, we receive the power and direction to bring about the kingdom of God, as God's will is done on earth as in heaven. So come, receive the answers to all your prayers. For here at this table, we remember the night on which Jesus was offered up for us. 
gathered with his disciples in the upper room, having loved them fully, he loved them to the very end. And there at the table, he took a loaf of bread, and having blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and blessed it, and give it to, giving it to them, he said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. My friends, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. According to your goodness, O God, you have given us these gifts. Fruits of the earth, worked by human hands to be for us our spiritual food and drink. Send now the power of your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and upon all of us who are gathered in many places out of our love for you. May what we receive be the bread of life and a cup of salvation that we may bring life and salvation to our world as we glorify you in these and in all our days through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us go faithfully forward, confident in God's abundant provision for us and for the whole world. May all that we have received be freely given away for the sake of the mission to which Christ calls each of us. To. And now may the grace, mercy, and peace of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you and keep you now and forevermore. Amen.